none of this stuff is new. So back in 2000, 2001, there was a report in New York City when I was training there at the time that said that one out of every three black gay men were HIV positive from a study. It wasn't an estimate, that was actually from the study, one out of everything that they tested was positive. And that was in 2000, so that was 17 years ago. So all these people sounding the alarm right now like this is something new, we've been screaming about this for years. Um, I, you would have to do a whole documentary to break down the history, both politically, religiously, racially, uh, scientifically, medically, um, as well as community-wise, that's kind of influenced it to this point. But, you know, suffice it to say, I think part of it is because people didn't really pay attention to black people, much less black gay men. And so a lot of, because the epidemic was squarely centered with a lot of white gay men at the beginning, that's where all the services went. And over time, even though the demographic got browner and blacker, what happened was that the funding politically was still being shunted to these organizations that weren't serving black and brown gay men. And so that's part of the problem that you have with it. And when the alarm isn't sounded, people don't worry about it, people aren't thinking that they're at risk, that's part of the problem. It's not that black gay men are having sex without condoms more than anyone else. It's not that we have more sexual partners than anybody else. It's none of that kind of individual, the individual level like pathology stuff that people want to talk about. Um, there's part of it that's just become uh, a big cultural thing right now. When you look at the South, and not specific for black gay men, but you look at this being the Bible Belt, you look at the Southern strategy, um, you look at the prison industrial complex, you look at how all these things play out. I think what's happened is that when you look at gay civil rights and kind of HIV rights and destigmatization of HIV, those two movements went hand in hand. Um, during like the 80s, 90s to now. But what people forgot was that um, black men were gay too, or more specifically, that gay men were black men as well. So people forget about it and be like, oh, well, you're gay, so we're all together in Kumbaya. And it's like, no, racism happens in the gay white community. The same racism that happens in the heterosexual community happens in the gay community. There's the same stuff that's going on with straight people and white supremacy, those same things don't obviously get washed away just because someone is gay. Like someone is gay, and someone once said to me that they thought that um, because white men, white gay men were oppressed because they're gay, that they would not be as racist. And I had to laugh at that because that's funny to me because then it, you, you approach it like these things exist in two separate silos. And so that maybe you know, these men will have this experience. And ideally, you would think about it and say, well, okay, if you get oppressed for one reason, you wouldn't worry about another. But when you get oppressed for your sexual orientation, you can still fall back on your white privilege and then go on there. And some of them trump each other, not to use that name, but like some of them kind of, one can supersede the other, let's say that, um, and go from there.